Okay, guys, before we get started, I just want to introduce you. This is Mr. Tracy. He's from Loyola. We talked about him visiting, right? Yeah. You respect him even more than you respect us. Got it? All right, guys, let's review our area formulas first. What's the area of our rectangle? How do we find the area of a rectangle? Jordan. Base times height, or I'd say length times width, right? Length times width? Yeah. What's our area of a triangle? Three. One half base times height. One half base times height. And the area of a circle? Savannah. We call 3.14 pi. Uh, pi. So we have our area of circles pi r squared. Right? All right, we're going to use these today, but we have to add to them because we're going to do volume today. What's volume? What is our definition of volume? Done? Okay, so what would that be for, though? What is length times width times height? What shape would that be? A rectangle would be length times width times height. But what is volume? So what does that mean? Right, the amount of space that the object has, it's inside of it, right? So the volume of like a cup is how much like liquid you can fit in a cup, right? How much goes into our object? So today we're going to use our volume formulas to find areas of cylinders, rectangles, and triangular prisms. All right, so we're going to break into groups. We're already in our groups, but we're going to measure our objects, find our formulas, and find our volumes. Good? So the base, right, that's our area. That's our area. Yeah. Then we need to add times height to get our body base. So length times width times height gives us our volume. So that's the formula you guys need to write down for the volume of the rectangle. Measuring some surface areas, just to be clear. And, and when you weren't married, measuring the surface areas, your 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 areas were all inches by inches, which gave you hour or two, okay? Which which instead of calling it cubic, you call it square inches. Okay? And so therefore, when you're doing a surface right. like this, so you have square inches. And when you're doing a length, you just have inches. But when you're doing a volume, you have cubic for, for that bigger volume. So okay. what you're being asked to do today okay, is take these different objects, okay? And you're each supposed to take two of them. Okay? And, and you can work in pairs. And, and find in, in, in each one of these cases that you have to figure out what the, the length of the base is to about the nearest quarter of an inch. And, and also what the height is. Okay? Of, of the triangle, and then the height of the, the solid itself. This formula is a little tricky, okay, because it's got height of it twice. Because okay? I've got one half the base times the height of the triangle times the height of the pyramid. Or the, I'm sorry, the prism, okay? which would be distance. So, so for, for each one of them, okay, find the, the length of the base, find the height of the triangle, and then find the height of the uh, Prism and multiply the three together and multiply by one. Like this. So you guys can have that. And you guys can have one of those. And have one of those. So you guys can have one of those. Good. Two of these. I mean, we're going to have four. We're going to have four. So you guys can trade all the things. Quick question. Let's do it in inches. Let's do it in inches. Is this a good way to measure the yes. No, why not? I mean, just in case you measure I got 20 and a half. The center, okay? So I think as close to the center as possible. Yeah, double check your measurement. What is that awfully close to? Two. Yep. So write down in the dimensions for your object that your diameter is two. Then what do you do to find your radius? Divide by two, exactly. 
Well, we you use a triangle. So we're going to go cross like this, going right through the middle of the block. How big would your diameter be? Well, we just want to put it down as Write that down, down under your dimensions of your object. You can do your work down here and put your information here for your diameter divided by two. So what is this one? You just wrote a random one. What is that? What do you call that? What part of the circle is half of the diameter? They're all right. So write that this is the radius. And then what other measurement do you need for this formula? The height, exactly. So measure the height of the object. Um, you're confused on what? Okay. You've got two heights, okay? You've got the height of the triangle itself, okay? which would be this distance, which is about three quarters, okay? And then you've got the height of the prism itself, which is about three inches. Okay. So when you look at your formula, okay, your formula is actually one half base times height times height. Okay. You, you could call the second height of capital H if you like it. What's your second object? Write that down so we know what you're referring to. Now, is our formula going to change for a different object? No, same formula. Inches. Inches. So you use that center dot all the way over. But here, line up your zero with the edge here. Well, look at this nice line going right through the center. Let's use that. Okay, so line up your zero, hold that, and tell me where it goes to. About the three, exactly. So that's your one, though, the three going all the way across. All the way across. Radius is halfway. What's the length of the entire circle? It starts with a D. Yeah. Go ahead. Diane. Okay, so write that down. Okay, this one. Excellent. Uh, you know, you divide by two or multiply by two. No matter what type of rectangular prism you because you took one half times 7.5 or 0.75. What measured 7.5? Seven and a half. What, what measured 7.5? Hey guys, about one more minute. We're only going to get one minute. Well, this I think is about 0 0.75. This I think is about 0.5. And this one I think is about almost three. We did centimeters. Uh huh. So you're doing centimeters. Okay. Well, that's my fault. I should have made it more clear that you were doing uh, inches cube. But you're right. You guys are going to lead your Okay, here's what I need. Listen to the directions as smoothly as possible. You are leaving calculator, ruler, and shapes at your desk that you're at now. All you're taking with you is your paper you just finished. You'll get a new one at the next station, okay? Your pencil and your binder if you have it in your desk, okay? I want group three to come over here. I want this group to go over there. I want group two to go to group three. Right. So your object, write what you have. Find your dimensions. Find your width and height. And you're going to square it. Times pi. So write the square formula that we need to find, that we need to use, which is what? So, we're going to have volume under the
because you can say 20 or 30. Yeah, you can. You can. Okay. And then the hook goes up and down. Perfect. So you have your 1.25. Excellent. Oh, but, so then, is that going to measure the height? So therefore, the base is this distance, the height is this distance. Okay? But this form is a little tricky because I've got another height. Because I've got the height of the whole thing. Okay? And, you, and you can think of it that way. Right? Being a height coming up in that So I've got a triangle that has a base and a height. And a height of the whole so in your line where it asks you to write the formula, you're going to have to write down the volume equals 1 and a half B times H times H. Okay? Now, you can use two little h's, but you might want to put a little h and a big h, so that you're telling yourself that one of them is a height of the triangle, and the other one's a height of the, the prism itself. So, so write your formula. Volume equals one half base times height times height. Diameter goes all the way to the end. Diameter. So measure that, and then divide by two. Take one minute. Yes. So write down the trick plate. It's two inches. And then what else do you need to plug into the formula? You got this one. You got to do it in your height. This will be the same. So measure something for us. So the radius is pretty much. I have to write down. We'll switch them in a minute. You can go. Is it too round? Yes. Okay. We've been working hard on these three new formulas. What we're going to do is complete an exit ticket for you guys, which is one of each. So I want eyes up here without looking down. Who can tell me the formula for a rectangular prism's volume? Michael. And? You're missing one part. Times height, length times width times height. Who can tell me the formula for a triangular prism? Who can tell me the formula? Sagoon, not Sagoon. I'm looking at you saying whatever. Sagoon, go. One half times base times height. Times height. Remember that one's got two heights. What about over here with a cylinder? Adam. Excellent. Pi r squared times height. Keep those formulas in mind as you're completing this last assignment, okay? 
You may use a calculator. You're going to stay where you're seated. We'll pass these out to you, and then we'll get you your homework. Just hang on to the mule. You're going for notes. Okay. First one, get them on the rest of them. Units. Okay, I'm coming around with your homework. The papers you completed at each station should have your formulas on them. Use them this evening for this. Leave the rulers, leave the calculators on your desk. The only thing, because we have a couple more minutes until lunch, that I wanted to give you guys the opportunity to do because you don't get this kind of exposure that often. Uh, Mr. Tracy works at Loyola, I told you that, right? Yes, he's a math professor there. If any of you have any college kind of questions, things about what to do in high school to get there, this might be the time to ask someone. He's the expert here. So if you have anything. What kind of points do you need? Okay. Well, you have to graduate from high school. You have to have done academic courses. So, so that means that, that, that you want to have the courses that you need. That's your guidance counselor to talk to you about uh, as far as, as being college prepared for courses. And, and, and then you usually take an SAT test and so on and so forth as well. But, but your emphasis should be on, on studying hard in class, learning what you're trying to learn, okay, and, and doing well on those tests. And then that translates into being able to do what you need to get to college. Uh, you can get a scholarship um, based on a number of different things. Okay, uh, one of the things can be on on, on your abilities. Okay? Another thing can be on, on on need. That is, a lot of people go and, and look at, at uh, financial aid packages and so on and so forth as, as to whether they can get in that way. Um, but yeah, math people, they're looking for a lot. You'll see, see a lot as far as the STEM program is concerned later on in middle school and on into to, uh, high school. And, and they're looking desperately for people that can do math and science. Okay? Uh, those are the fields that, that if you go into them, you're going to find a job when you walk out. And, and some of the other fields that people go into, the jobs are a little tighter. Okay? Uh, but in, in science and math, if you study hard there, they're, they're going to want you. This calculus hard. I teach a lot of calculus, okay? and, and, and calculus really is a fun course, okay? but, but the thing that makes calculus work is algebra. That is, my students that come in and know how to do algebra do wonderfully in calculus. In fact, most of the mistakes that were made on the test that I just gave yesterday in the calculus class were algebra mistakes. So, so when you get into algebra 1 and algebra 2, okay, uh, learn the algebra. The better you are at that, the easier calculus. And clearly, that means pay attention to your pre-algebra teacher, right? Of course. Of course. Yeah. But what you're doing today, okay, is set up for what you're going to be able to do in calculus. Okay? I, I had students, okay, on that test that, that when they looked at, at sand falling into a pile and was told that it was so many cubic feet per minute, didn't realize that was a change in volume. And all of you guys would know that if it's measured in cubic feet, it has to be a volume. And so, therefore... What you did today is helpful for what you're going to do in calculus. We've been telling you all along, math builds upon itself. You couldn't be successful in this class if you hadn't done well in like third grade, right? You need skills as you move along. And it's the same thing as you get up to college. You can't do college level math without high school level math, without middle school level math. Everything is a building block. Okay? Um, sure. Now, now you got to realize that, that that's a competition type thing, okay? as, as with the math scholarship. Okay? That is, they, they're, they're going to pick and choose and, and say, you are very, very, very good. We'd like to push you a little along a little further. Okay? If, if, if you want to get a scholarship, then, then you've got to be in the top 1 or 2% of the people that are doing it. But does it happen? Yes. How long have you worked at Loyola? Uh, 
full time for 13 years. And before that, I taught in Mulberry County Public High School. 30. All right, are we good? Yes. Can we thank Mr. Tracy for taking time out of here today? And thank you guys. You were wonderful. You were wonderful to work with. I appreciate it. Um, I think this is really important because not only are the kids still learning at every station, but they're up and they're moving and they're more active. They got to work with partners, which I think was great for them. There was a bit of a socialization factor with that. And it was more than just a lecture up at the board, which is really important for these kids. They were hands-on. They were measuring themselves instead of just plugging in values that they knew of. So I think it's really important doing things like this. Um, in fact, my intern and I were talking earlier about that you would need a minimum of two people to do something like this, but this is absolutely feasible. In fact, next period what we'll be doing is they're going to do another assignment that's just a review of old material at the third station, and we've already taught them one shape going into this. I, oh, I thought the students were wonderful. I mean, they, they, they all cooperated well. Um, uh, it, it, it was tough doing the first session, okay, because, because you had to teach everything involved, okay, As not only your particular uh, object that you're supposed to be finding the volume of, but the whole concept of volume. So, so it was tough doing that first session, and after that it went, got a lot, it went a lot better. It, I enjoyed it, okay, I enjoyed it a lot.